All right. Well, I'm going to give you a review of my second viewing of the movie Oppenheimer. Today I went and saw it at my standby regular old theater. It was uh, $9 and like, I want to say 30 cents on a uh, 4.30 ticket on a Saturday. So that ticket was uh, about uh, $9 less than, or $8 less than um, the IMAX ticket, okay? Uh, I didn't get any popcorn, I didn't get any Pepsi, so I saved another $19.50. Uh, the irony is, is that this theater has bagged popcorn that they ship in, and I've had it before. And their bagged popcorn is like two days stale, but the quality of the kernel is <laughs> three times better than the quality of the kernel from the place I ate uh, when I went to see Oppenheimer on Friday. <laughs> so you got a choice. You can either eat uh, day old stale puffy popcorn. It's got a nice crunch to it. It's still got a nice crunch to it. Or you can eat fresh popcorn. It's like eating gravel. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I just skipped it. And I went in to watch the movie and gosh darn it, I didn't it's right over here. Hold on, let me get this. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Look at my dirty table. Look at my dirty chair. I'm right here. <laughs> yes, the chair of sorrows. The chair of sorrows. Okay, now we're back. Okay, so I took these today. These are my shooting earmuffs. I took these to the regular theater just in case the sound was just as bad as the IMAX, and it was. It was slightly not as loud, but it was loud as hell in certain places. And this is the way that the sound person recorded the sound levels in the movie and he was trying to make a statement of uh, impact concerning the power of atoms and molecules and the atomic process every time he hits those peaks but there's it's so uncomfortable I mean I was like god darn man Got my green tea here. But the good thing for me was I was so uncomfortable with that IMAX movie with the sound levels, the way they were, that my body, not my brain, my body remembered it. And I, I was putting the headphones on before anything was happening on the screen because my body knew where the peaks were. It remembered every one of them. It was creeping me out. <laughs> but I just got to the point where I started leaving them off for the most part. And uh, it actually helped me at the end of the movie because at the end of the movie, Oppenheimer makes a statement to uh, Albert Einstein. And I completely misunderstood it the first time. And the second time, it was like, wow. It made the movie. But... Uh, they call him Killian. I call him Cillian because it's C, but then cancer is, what it, is a C, but it's a K sound. So Killian, they call him Killian Murphy. Um, he speaks it so softly at the end of the movie that it's easy to misunderstand. It. But I don't want to tell you what it is. I want you to see it at the, at the theater. But it's a, it's a verification of... Uh, how Oppenheimer believes he may have destroyed the human race. But the way he says it is very calm and quiet and very matter-of-factly. That's the way that Killian Murphy says it as Oppenheimer. Uh, and it changed the end of the movie for me drastically. So I'm glad I went today. Because 
originally in the IMAX version, I was so half deaf that when he made that statement, I couldn't hear it, and I misunderstood what he said. I thought it was, I thought it was a very fatalistic uh, statement of what he hoped happened. Instead, it was a statement of what he thinks may have happened, which is it's kind of sad. It's a sad statement. But, uh, and he says that to uh, uh, Albert Einstein, who was a good friend of his. Um, but it, the movie was still excellent. Uh, I would actually say that I enjoyed the standard theater more than the IMAX, but that is because that's what I watch all the time. If I went to IMAX all the time, I'd probably enjoy that. If I... If... If I... I actually... You know, I, I gotta be honest. Uh, once we get over $7 to see a movie, which $7 is what the cost is during the week, it starts becoming prohibitive for me to go to the movies. I just... You know, that $17 IMAX thing, uh, the seats are nice, but uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I like a movie that has, everything is uh, geared towards enjoying the experience, and the sound on this movie, uh, It's painful, and it's it's not painful in an instructive way. It's just freaking painful, and uh, I really think you know when you get to your home theater, uh, you may have to watch out for this for some of the peaks. If you have a really nice home theater with a really nice sound system, which I don't have anymore because I used to have one and it died. But you may have to watch out for the pigs on it. Um, but the movie itself is outstanding. It really is. I mean, really, it's a tour de force of acting from all the actors. Uh, Emily Blunt again, like I said. She she got to me again. Uh, uh, Killian Murphy and, and uh, Matt Damon as... Uh, Oppenheimer and Groves, their interplay is really excellent, and Robert Downey Jr. is just as, as evil as he can be, and magnificent. All the actors in this uh, movie were magnificent. Uh, one of the actors that uh, played Edward Teller, uh, Edward Teller was quite an important person after the initial atomic bomb. He was, for intents and purposes, the father of the American hydrogen bomb, which was a far more powerful bomb. Um, and that got Oppenheimer in trouble because Oppenheimer was listening to everybody and he, was, he knew he was the only spokesman that anyone would listen to. And he was advocating for not going to more and more and more powerful bombs. He said, you know, we, we've we got to put a cap on this. We, we've got to, you cannot just keep going more and more. And like I said in the last video, the Russians, the Soviets, actually proved Oppenheimer right when they blew up their Tsar, Tsar Bomba and uh, they actually downgraded it by half before they blew it up and it still scared the crap out of them. It so shook the Soviet military establishment that they backed off of any larger bombs and they, because they realized that uh, having bombs like that is such a liability. If you have a bomb that can blow up a city, that's one thing. If you have a bomb that can blow up, you know, a hundred miles of a country, you can very quickly, plus with the amount of debris that it kicks up, you can 
cause a worldwide problem very quickly. So, anyway, glad I saw it. Went and saw the movie again. Uh, went, glad I saw it at the cheaper theater. Uh, very unhappy with my theater with its restroom. The restroom was absolutely nasty, filthy, and they need to fix that. And uh, no, I did not talk to the manager because the manager's why it looks like that. Because what I saw in the men's uh, handicap restroom was dried pee that had been dried pee that had been on that urinal for days, and urine that had overflowed or something had overflowed out of the toilets at the base of the floor. So I've got to report that to somebody because I don't want any handicapped man going in there in a wheelchair having to use the toilet and having to use that toilet. I just don't. Um, and the rest of the, of the restroom was just absolutely filthy. I just was surprised that you know, this is the one thing I talk about going to Charlestown or going to a Wawa. Wawa gas station. Or Sheets gas station. But Wawa is usually better than Sheets for cleanliness. Um, but Sheets is usually pretty clean. And McDonald's restrooms are usually clean and Burger King is not as clean as McDonald's but they're usually clean and Walmart restrooms are always clean for the most part um, and that's a, that's a that's a point of pride for me for a business is if your restroom is clean then I kinda wanna buy stuff from you but if your restroom is dirty I don't wanna buy food from you because if your restroom is dirty it means that your sanitation all over your job is dirty. So I can't imagine what that uh, food uh, counter is like behind that food counter if the restroom looks like what I saw today. So anyway, I'll take care of that. But the theater was uh, relatively okay. I did have a problem, which is uh, I haven't had this problem in a lot of years, but I haven't been going to the, re to the theater in a lot of years. But I had... Uh, my chair got, my seat got kicked uh, three times. Where I was sitting got kicked three times. And if you, you know what I'm talking about. I was sitting in the seat. Somebody was sitting behind me. These people were sitting actually like two seats away from me. But the whole seat went like this. Like, it went like that once when they sat down. And then again... And I seem to remember a, 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 it was once, twice, and then I remember a third time later that I went to the restroom because it's three hours long and I had to go to a restroom. I waited through the part of the movie I missed last time to see it. And once I got to a part of the movie that I remembered that I'd seen in the last movie, I said, okay, now I can go. You do my break. I went into the restroom and saw that disaster. And I did find one stall that I could use that wasn't absolutely just, it was moderately disgusting. And I had to go, I had to do my business. And I went and did my business and uh, went back to the theater and I sat down and damn if I didn't sit, I, I didn't sit down where I was at because I figured when I left somebody would sit in the middle where I sat at. and sure enough when I came back somebody was sitting in the, I was sitting in the middle but I was sitting like four rows up sure enough when I came back I I didn't even look over there until I sat down because I had no intention of sitting back in the same place and taking the same abuse so I sat down at the end when you walk in the theater the first seat that was in the long row I sat down at that one because I was going to look off at an angle and be away from these people you know? So I sat there for a while, and sure enough, 15 minutes later, my seat got kicked again by somebody who was sitting, who had moved over, was sitting three seats away from me. And my seat got kicked twice in a span of about three minutes. And I sat there for about two, three minutes. I thought about it. I said, no, I'm not going to say nothing to this person because there's two seats down there's an open row and I'm still three seats up from the front 
and I've got my I got my headphones on so my hearing's protected and I know I look retarded that's okay I don't care that's how I spent most of the movie and I can still hear very well with these on I mean I can actually hear better with these on in a noisy environment than I can hear with these off so anyway so I moved the two seats down away from whoever the uh, idiot was who needed attention because his parents didn't raise him right and he was a little child and he comes to the theaters because it's funny for him to get a reaction from people he doesn't know and because uh, I wasn't there with anybody I knew and I don't have a bunch of friends I have a beef with but this person just decided that he was going to ir irritate the old white guy and that's fine so I moved two seats down and spent the rest of the movie watching the movie and enjoying it. I didn't get, my seat didn't kick kicked again, the guy didn't move again. And I just sat there and watched the movie and as soon as the movie was over I left right away. And uh, so I, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, the sound though, they made a mistake. They made a big mistake on the sound of this movie. It's too damn loud. I know what they're going for. They're going for a dramatic effect with the sound. You know, where I can justify the nudity as being part of the story, this is just an added effect that didn't need to be there. They could have changed the sound so that it wasn't so peaky, so it wasn't so loud. And they could have changed it so that it would have made an impression on you without being painful. But they didn't. I don't I mean... I don't think that, I certainly don't think this person deserves an Academy Award for the sound on this movie. Um, and does it affect me saying it's the one of the best movies I've ever seen? Um, I'm going to say no, just because the rest of the movie was so good. But the sound is a disappointment. Now, over a television that has no sound system hooked to it, you'll never hear that. You might hear a whoop, 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 whoop from the speakers as they try to deal with the with the uh, low tones because uh, they went with a lot of very, very low frequency tones. And the problem with doing extremely high power, low frequency tones in a movie is there are very few sound systems that can handle that. Um, you actually get like a, a thromp, and that's the sound, a thromp out of a, uh, a subwoofer. If the tone is, is distorted and powerful and it can't handle it, it'll get a thromp, and it is, it's not pleasant. So I don't know what was going on with the sound. I'm glad, I'm so glad. I'm absolutely ecstatic I took this. And I'm glad I saw the movie again because, like I said, at the end of the movie, um, Killian Murphy says something that I totally misunderstood in, at the end of the first movie, of the IMAX movie I saw. And the final verdict on IMAX versus standard is, I probably won't go see another IMAX movie again. Because I really enjoyed this movie I saw today, other than the, the douchebag who needed some attention because his parents didn't raise him right uh, and like I said about that um, I actually recorded this once before but I did it on my front porch and it got dark so I'm talking like <laughs> I look like a ghost at the end of that video but uh, I don't challenge people about stuff like this. Now, if you were breaking into my car, if you were uh, attacking me, or if you were attacking someone I cared about that I knew, sure, I would go to the wall for that person, you know? But when it comes to stuff I can walk away from, I'm gonna walk away every time. I'm not gonna turn around and give this person the satisfaction knowing they got to me. I'm just gonna move. And if they move back behind me again, I'm going to move again. And he can follow me all over that theater until I run out of seats. I don't care. But see, while he's doing that, people are watching him behind me. And they know what's going on. They know that 
this person's being a complete dick. And, you know, hopefully one of them will stand up with the guy moved like five times, officer. And I guess the guy wanted to get knocked out. So he got knocked out. And, you know, so anyway. It was a good movie. And, you know, you just got to be aware that you're in public and you're going to be dealing with uh, people that weren't raised right by their parents. Um... But the movie was good. I, I enjoyed watching it a second time. Uh, I actually enjoyed having my earmuffs with me because the sound was so damn loud in some parts of it. Very disappointed in that. But the uh, seeing the young lady again who did the, the nude part, uh, she is an excellent actress. I mean, she's very beautiful. She's a very beautiful body. But she's an excellent actress and she added to the plot um, and all the actors were excellent um, and the plot was excellent and the writing was excellent um, so I think it's kind of a lesson for all of us uh, and that's one of the reasons why Nolan when you put a movie on IMAX when you make the investment when you get somebody who backs you and you say I want to shoot my movie in IMAX People automatically go, oh, this is going to be something special. And they put forth a little bit extra effort because they know they're going to be on the big, big screen, that the investment's going to be made. These rolls weigh 600 pounds, these film rolls for IMAX. So it's a major hassle to handle this stuff and to show it, um, but it was brilliant filmmaking. And I really liked it. Uh, I, I like seeing it again. Uh, restroom notwithstanding, and moron behind me notwithstanding. Uh, but the sound was too loud. There's certain places where the sound is peaking out. And I noticed in the theater, it seemed like the pre roll before the movie, all of that was also turned up louder than normal. Because apparently they were preparing the audience for the louder soundtrack of Oppenheimer and I don't know if they were thinking uh, you know I almost wonder if they were trying to keep the audience from going to sleep you know by hitting them periodically with these unbelievably loud sounds but that was disappointing. Uh, but the rest of the movie wasn't disappointing. It was another banger. It was just fun to watch professionals do a great job with a great movie, a great story. Um, the sound was a disappointment. Um, the moron was a disappointment. It has nothing to do with the movie. The restroom was just ridiculous. It has nothing to do with the movie. The movie was excellent. So that's what I thought I'd tell you. And if you are on the fence about IMAX or going to see the standard movie and you want to keep your ten dollars in your pocket and you just want to see the movie go see the standard movie standard movie is wonderful I loved it um, I actually I don't know you know IMAX is a thing you have to sit like I said in the back seats to enjoy because it's so big that screen is so big but it's so tall it's like more tall than the regular screen. And it's almost looking like looking up at a mountain. If, if you're sitting in them front rows, I purposely, this time, I didn't sit in the front rows. I said, I'm not even going to breach that. I'm going to get in the middle, maybe four rows up, just in case. And I'm glad I did. And two people sat down in front of me, two young kids. A uh, young kid with uh, uh, dreadlock curly hair and... And his uh, girlfriend sat down in front of me, but his hair wasn't up in the screen. And they were very well made, uh, very well behaved. They got up one time to use the restroom, came back. Nice little couple. And I was sitting there, you know, until Moronicus started kicking on the seat. And then I went and did my business and sat down. And then Moronicus followed me over to where I was sitting and kicked on the seat again. And then I went down two rows and he didn't follow me. Because 
you know, you can go dark places. And when you go dark places, you do stupid shit. And, you know, a theater, a movie is no reason to do something that affects the rest of your life, you know. Um, and that's what I always tell people when you're have the means on you to do things that can change the rest of someone's life you have to have more self-control than the person that's trying to affect your emotions you can't live your life by emotions you have to live your life by logic and the logic was I had all kinds of seats I could go to until it, you know if, until something came up where this person decided to reach out and touch me because you know, nobody touches me you know unless a young lady and I give her permission um, but anyway there's my review Oppenheimer was good again the sound was way too damn loud in certain places I'm very disappointed about that but the acting was brilliant the movie was brilliant it's it's brilliant and uh, well worth the nine dollars and thirty cents or fifty cents to see again um, I don't know if I'll go back to this theater again. I'm not looking at that restroom. I just, that was so disappointing. But uh, anyway, I hope I didn't keep you too long. God bless you folks. Thank you for watching the video. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Go see Oppenheimer. It, it's a, let me get my big ugly face in here. Go see Oppenheimer. It's a great movie. Peace.